Hey folks, good Monday morning, May the 11th, 5-11. Good to see y'all. Hi, Diana. Hi, Alice. Uh, beautiful Monday morning. Nice and cool out this morning. A little bit foggy. Hi, Louise. Hi, Judy. Hi, Paula. I thought we'd start <clears throat> this morning showing you what we got. And I know we talked about it a little bit, and some of you might have seen the video. Boy, he's all wrapped up in here. He's snoozing. So this is... This is little Oliver. Can you say hi, Ollie? He's kind of sleepy. Puppies, all they do is eat, poop, and sleep, right? He plays for like an hour at a time, gets exhausted, and then goes back to sleep. So there he is. There's little Oliver. Hey, buddy. <laughs> I'm going to stick him on the chair behind me, unless you want him, Mama. No, i got to get school. All right. <clears throat> Let's turn around here. You cuddle up right here in the chair. All right. There we go. All right. <clears throat> He's all snuggled in there. All right. Well, good to be with you this morning. Hope all is going well on this uh, <clears throat> Monday, Monday morning. Um, hope you got your coffee. Got my coffee here. Hope you had a good day yesterday celebrating Mother's Day. Uh, man, you ho I hope you uh, didn't let your the women down in your lives. So, uh, if you did, uh, better hurry up and make it up. All right, get that going on quick. Uh, my uh, my parents came over. We celebrated uh, Mother's Day and also Lily's fifth birthday. She turned five yesterday, and so uh, we had a dual celebration. I grilled some hamburgers and hot dogs and had some. Sweet corn and watermelon, you know, good stuff, good stuff. So, and of course, cake, because you have to have cake, right? <clears throat> good. good to be with y'all. Um, Want to start off with the joke this morning, and then we'll get into our Bible study. So our joke is is uh, like this. I've been on the computer a lot, you know, and uh, <clears throat> doing a lot of work on the computer. And I decided to play my computer in chess. And it was not great because the computer beat me in chess, but it was no match for me in kickboxing. Uh, ha! Did you catch that? Boom! Boom! That was good. Nathan gave me the rim shot. That was good. Okay, <clears throat> here we go. Let's dig into some uh, some study, and we've been kind of focusing on one main topic the whole time we've been doing Bible study, and that's how we study the Bible, how we dig into his word, how important it is to us. And so we're going to, I thought, let's just, you know, it's a new week, but let's continue that theme because I think it's good for us as we, you know, we constantly are learning more about studying his word. And, and so I want to share a couple of things with you um, as we get in. But, but first, what is the, for you, this is a personal question, what is the most difficult thing about Bible study for you? Is it finding time to do it? Is it figuring out what version to read? Is it figuring out, you know, how to read it? How to study? You know, what is it? I think sometimes though, when it comes down to it, I think for me, um, <clears throat> it would be the personal application side of it. Um, I'm, you know, we all have different gifts in different areas and, and I'm not terrible at figuring out what it means and and putting it into maybe a teaching or preaching style and and uh, but oftentimes the, the biggest difficulty is that personal application how do I then apply it to my life um, <clears throat> so that's important we need to we need to work on you know I think that personal application of Bible study and and Jesus uh, 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 through the inspired word uh, of James said this, and this is what James one twenty two says. It says, "Be doers of the word, and not hearers only." Be doers of the word, and not hearers only. Um, you know what? Satan doesn't care if if you study the Bible as long as you don't apply it to your life. He doesn't care. In fact, he knows the word, um, but he, he doesn't care if you study. He doesn't want you though to apply it to your life. Uh, and that's an important thing. We need to apply his word to our lives. Jesus then uh, taught, uh, well, before all this, Jesus taught about this. He said, now that you know these things, now that you know them, you've studied them, you've heard them, you'll be blessed if you do them. 
you'll be blessed if you do them. And, and I don't know about you, but I like to be blessed. I do. Um, <clears throat> knowing the word isn't enough. Our experiences um, of life, we need to do the word. Uh, tells us, James tells us, don't just hear the word, do it. So how do we become doers of the word? Well, I've got a little bit of help for you this morning, and and uh, I know you might not be prepared to take notes, and that's okay because this will be saved, and you can go back and watch it, or take a screenshot, or do whatever you need to do. But there's four ways to become doers of the word, I think, uh, or, or or this is this is kind of how I practice it. Um, I make an application. I uh, put together a. Um, <clears throat> Uh, kind of a, 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 an application on how I'm going to do it, and, and when I'm studying a passage, I look into it. You know, God, how can I, how can I make this work for me? Uh, you know, how can I become a doer of this? And so, this is how I kind of apply it to my life. And, and these are these are four simple steps. First, um, when I'm looking at a passage, uh, I need to make that application personal. It needs to be personal. If I'm going to apply something, it needs to be personal to me. Um, it can't be for all my family. It can't be for for the we's or or you's or them. It has to be for me, for I. Um, so it needs to be personal. Second, it needs to be uh, practical. It needs to be practical. Uh, it's something that we should be able to actually be able to do. Um, it might encompass a whole entire project, or it might be just a simple one single step. Uh, in, a, in a broader action plan. But uh, to become a doer, we're, we, it needs to be practical. Third, it needs to be possible. It needs to be possible. If, if we choose an application of, of a passage of Scripture on our lives, it needs to be something that we can actually do, right? Uh, for instance, we might say, I'm going to read through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation every day. That's just not possible. Uh, but you could bite off a chunk and say, I'm going to read uh, two chapters, two chapters every day. Um, you know, that's that's doable. Um, that's possible. And then the fourth thing about becoming a doer of the word, it needs to be provable. That means you need to put a deadline on it. Um, so, for example, take uh, take Philippians 2.14 as an example. Uh, Philippians 2.14 says this, do all things without grumbling or disputing. Do all things without grumbling or disputing. That's a good one to have for teenagers, right? Do all things without grumbling or disputing. And you might write this personal application for yourself. You might write it out for yourself and, and say this, Lord, uh, I need you to help me to not grumble at work. I'm going to stay accountable by asking a friend to check with me next week to see if I did this. You write a simple note as you're doing Bible study, maybe in the side of your Bible or, or you put a note card in your Bible or maybe you have a notebook that you write things down. But you need to make it personal, uh, practical, possible, and provable. And by doing that, uh, we begin to not just read and know the word, but we begin to become doers of the word. And that's what we're called to do. We're called to be doers of the word, not just hearers. Satan loves it when the only thing that we do is hear the word. He wants us to, to hear it and then walk away and forget it. Jesus calls us to do it. And in fact, he says, uh, now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Uh, folks, I love to be blessed. I know that you probably enjoy and love being blessed as well by him. So let's do all that we can, not just so that we can be blessed, but so that we have that knowledge, we live it, we apply it, we live it out, we do the word. And by doing that, you're going to be blessing others. All right, guys. Love you all. Appreciate you. I hope you're going to have a great Monday. I hope you're, you're productive in all that you do, uh, successful in everything that you put your, your hands and your mind to. And uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, to just a good, a good productive day, seeing things get done. Uh, that's always good for the heart and for the head, isn't it? Uh, so uh, it's good to be with you. It's good to see y'all. Uh, we're going to let Oliver sleep back there a little bit and and uh, <clears throat> hope you can have a good day as well. All right, guys. Love y'all. As you are being blessed by him, make sure to be a blessing to others. We'll see y'all again.